Hi, and welcome to another episode of Sustainment TV. I'm your host, David McDonald. And before we get into today's video, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It will help the channel grow and improve upon what I do. But without further delay, let's get right into today's video. Today's video features an interview that I was able to do with a Grammy Award winning producer. He's also a husband, father, and a friend. I hope you enjoy today's presentation with Brian Reed. Sustainment TV would like to welcome Grammy Award winning producer, songwriter, musician, Brian Reed. What's good, man? What's going on, man? It's been a while. Your beer game is stronger than I remember it. Okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yours yeah, your, yours I'm getting just, good, too. You know, I'm just experimenting, man. It's like... <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it'll leave me at some point. <laughs> Glad I had a chance to sit down, uh, catch up with you, man. Who inspired you, man, to be a musician? You know, uh, you know, what was your, I guess, what was your compass or what, you know, what gave you the, the reason to want to do what you do? Musician off the bat, I would have to say it would be my mom and my sister. They both play piano. You know, we always had a piano. You know, I would always go out when they were playing, you know, practicing or whatever. And I would literally set up books and, you know, pots and pans and like, like beat drums next to them, like while they were playing, you know what I'm saying? So I, as a musician, I would say that inspired me first, but to be a producer, it would have to be Dr. Dre. I was a huge Dr. Dre fan. I still am. You know, once I heard his chronic album and I heard his ear, you know, he just, he heard stuff that I, I heard that most producers didn't hear his ear as far as his, you know, his, his placements, his simplicity of drums, but cadence at the same time, he knew what he was doing. And I, I was like, whoever him and his engineer are, <laughs> like they, they got this locked in. Like he would have to be my biggest influence as far as a producer goes, for sure. All right. Um, without going into, you know, your trade secrets and whatnot, what's your uh, what's your creative process like? It depends. Depends on the project. If I'm just making a simple track, it comes in different waves. Sometimes I have to make tracks by myself. And if I do, I like to see the visual. <laughs> I'm weird. I like to see like if you got any artwork you can send me, like, can I see it so I can know, you know, it helps it helps me if I'm being sent something to add to it's even it's much easier I can knock that out in in minutes I literally do and I have done it like several times like some sometimes somebody will send me an entire song be like I need some keys on here I need some strings you know I need a you know whatever just just do what you do with this I'll knock that out in a, in a heartbeat but the one that actually takes me the most time is, you know, when I have to dig, you know, I normally start with whatever the melody is and I'll, you know, I'll play to it. And then from there, I'll add some drums, you know, and then I'll go from there, add some, you know, some segues as far as transitions is um, transitions as far as like a, could be a cymbal swell or you know, harps or things like that to things that people don't normally hear in the track that I do, you know, that's, it's kind of complex, but, and lastly, it kind of puts the meat under the, the bone for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's kind of how it goes for me. What's been your, what's been your favorite performance being you? Medweek. Okay. I was in DC. It's called Medweek. It was a, a small business conference. Bill Clinton was president at the time. He couldn't be there, but he was tuned in on like via satellite. So they booked me to do the national anthem for the, the main event, which I played saxophone for. They booked me for like a few hours on the, they had a boat cruise as well. So that was the biggest, for me, I didn't know who Benny Powell was. So Benny Powell came to my hotel room. I was only 16 at the time. You know, I wasn't a, like an experienced saxophone player. Like it was, you know, like I said, I was a teenager. I was in school at the time. So I didn't really know who people were. Like, you know, this was just new to me. I just figured out how to play the thing. He came to my hotel room. We sat down and we talked for 
about an hour and then we practiced for like another two hours when he left i was like who is this dude so one day i was watching the cosby show and i saw his name i saw i saw count basies i was like you gotta be kidding me <laughs> like this dude was just sitting in my room for like three hours like literally like chopping it up and talking to me talking to my mom like like i don't know who this dude is well i'm trying to you know what i'm saying i'm talking to him just you know kind of playing along but yeah at the time i didn't know who he was i just i did the gig and later on i found out who the dude was i was just like yo <laughs> I didn't even know who Count Basie's was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that was that was my one of my best gigs f- for me as far as performing because I'm I don't consider myself a performer like that. Right. You know what I mean? But that was the best for me, man. That was that was that was breathtaking. And and the fact that, like I said, uh, the president was watching. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's cool, man. It's, it's those kind of moments, you know, when you, you kind of do your thing, you know, not having the knowledge of I me, mean, it, it it makes you, I think it kind of keeps you pure you know, in terms of being humble and not, you know, kind of, you know, doing stuff just for show. I mean, you were just, you know, being, you know, you being natural, being you, and that's, that's pretty awesome. Man. Yeah, cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's the best musical advice that you've been personally given? I don't want to jump right over there but i had a long conversation with michael jackson one time the the biggest thing that i took from that conversation was he pretty much said like anytime you do something anytime you create he said do every everything like it's your last and he he said that that was the thing that inspired him you know every time he went in in the studio every time he wrote he was like, I would do everything like it's the last time. And from that day on, you know, I did my best to kind of adopt that mentality. So it started taking me longer to do stuff. You know, I'll be honest, I used to do tracks in 15 minutes, 30 minutes sometimes. Mm-hmm. Now I'll, I'll take three days, five days if I need to. Sometimes I'll take two weeks yeah. until I get it right, you know until it's to the standard that I really, you know, want to achieve. And um, yeah, I got that from him. So I'm like, if, if the goat is telling me this, <laughs> <laughs> I can't argue with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. So on the flip side of that, um, what advice would you give someone who may want to aspire to either produce or to perform or to record or, or maybe even a combination? What advice would you give someone? It would depend on what they're trying to do. It, it would depend on if they're trying to be an artist or a producer or things are just so different right now. So I, I really I really don't know, to be honest. That's an I don't know question. For <laughs> some, <laughs> seriously, for some, it, it, it can be, be uh, developing a following or it's really hard, man, because things are much different than they used to be when I started as far as, you know, sending demo tapes in and, you know, things like that. Like, that's like out of here. You know what I mean? It's sounding like you're saying that even before COVID hit, it's sounding like you're saying it, it's a whole it's a whole different world, a whole new ball game. Oh, that has nothing to do with COVID at all. Yeah. If anything, COVID has made it better because people are actually working harder because they're in the house. But everybody has their own studio in the house. Right. Before, we had to go to the studio. We had to rent the studio town. Now everybody got a computer right here or a phone. they making beats on the phones. Like I'm like, yo. <laughs> so I, I really, I honestly don't know. I, that's a I don't know question right there. Yeah. It's crazy, man, how, um, you know, TikTok went from being, you know, on the hit list of you know who to music, yeah. you know, to record companies like making like licensing deals, with, you know, with, with them in order to, I mean, you could have a nobody today and six months from now, that same person, you know, a platform like TikTok to put them on. Well, like you just said, like if, if like you're saying, somebody, if somebody wants to be an artist, it's like, well, what's an artist now? 
you got people that literally make stupid videos and a stupid song that they just literally made up in two seconds and it goes viral and all of a sudden they're an artist and they got an album out and you know it's just like dude i don't know what's going on <laughs> seriously anytime you got people like ice jj fish making money i'm just like man right on do do what you do <laughs> Who's been your favorite artist to work with? Who's been your favorite and who's been your most influential? If it's the same person, that's fine too. My favorite to work with, I would have to say was Heavy D. I had so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> like when I say so much fun, like, and it was crazy because the way it started, and I'm not trying to like name drop and stuff, but I mean, these are like true stories. But when I lived in LA, I was around a lot of, you know, people that, you know, I I was influenced by, I grew up listening to, you know what I'm saying? So to meet these people was one thing. So when I got around them at the time, you know, I was kind of nervous because it's, you know, these are your your idols and then they become your peers, like, it's, you know, like overnight. Yeah. So me working with him, I remember we were in the studio one night. We were with, uh, man, it was a lot of people there. It was like Puff, Black Eyed Peas were there, Shaggy was there. Keisha Cole, Puff was working on a, uh, his album, uh, but he set me, Will I Am, and my brother Eric in the studio in a room, made us watch Prince videos because that's the vibe he wanted at the time. Okay. You know what I mean? So we had to watch Prince videos for like two hours and then we had to go upstairs and like try to, you know, create that vibe. So the next day we went back, Heavy D kind of like rescued me because I was, I was tired, man. I was like, dude, I, I can't get with this. Like, I I like what he's doing. <laughs> but every time he would come in, we'd be creating for 10 hours, eight hours here. You know what I'm saying? He would come in after you just sweat it. He'd be like, that ain't it. And he'd leave and be like, try again. I'm just like, bro, like, come on, man. <laughs> so one night, Ev, Ev had this, like, you know, it was a studio probably maybe five minutes away from the one we were at. He was like, man, I got this session I'm about to start. He was like, come with me. So I went, me and my brother Eric and me and my, my roommate nephew, we went over there and like, he was funny. Like it was exciting. Like I was just, I was so happy to get away. So we had fun and the energy in the room just felt, felt good. Like I was just so happy to like, just be me. You know, I didn't have to conform to this vibe right here. I was just like, yo, just like, let's just make music. You know what I mean? And the fact that it was heavy D, like I grew up on this dude. So I'm <laughs> on one song, like he was in the booth. And you know how he used to do the, the, the little fast, uh, I don't even know if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, my dilly 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 dilly. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, I said, dude, please for me. I said, you got to do this on the end of this song, please. <laughs> he was like, man, I don't do that no more. He was, le he was leaning on the wall in the booth. He was like, man, I don't do that no more. I was like, please for me, you got to do it. And he did it and I was just like, all right, I can go home now. <laughs> yeah, but that was fun. That was the most, probably the most fun that I've had. And when he passed, like it was, you know, I was devastated, man. Yeah. But he, yeah, it was a it was a, a good time. You, good time. You think any time in the, in the future you'll be releasing any sort of um, <clears throat> like holiday favorites album or something like that? You think, you think, that's, a, think that's in your plans in the future? Mm, nah, not that I, not that I expect right now, to be honest, my work load is uh, just kind of as it comes. Uh, and if I accept, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm, I honestly turned down more work today than than I um, accept just because I don't have the time to actually do it. Music's not a cash cow like it used to be. So, you know, you got to make a living and do other things. I would love to do a, a maybe a Christmas album or something like that. But uh yeah, it's, it's, it's not in, in the future for now. Oh, oh, Sustain Me TV, uh, y'all don't know, uh, Chef B be lighting it up in the kitchen. I'm surprised you had uh, <laughs> forth with some sort of meal prep company or something. Uh, oh, we, we busy, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm um, I'm actually starting teaching. Uh, well, I've actually already started, but uh, that's another thing that I've been doing, you know, behind the scenes. Yeah, you'll be you'll be seeing stuff really soon. All right, man. What's your what's your what's your final thoughts? I appreciate you, you know, having me on. I want people to know 
like you don't talk about who you are <laughs> but people people should know and don't edit this either uh i remember one time you know me and my family we were having some some hardships and uh you know you came over you know my my sis you know god rest his soul y'all came over in a blue van one day and i was like I didn't know what, I was looking out the window. I didn't know who the van was. I was like, who is that? Y'all stepped out. Y'all came in the house. <laughs> she handed me the keys. She was like, you know, this for y'all. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> that was like one of the dopest moments. Like, like we were in a bad spot and y'all came through. I just want people to know, you know, cause I know you'll never say it, but I'll say it. <laughs> I was a, um, a big moment, you know, a big breakthrough for me and my family. I appreciate it. And uh, and I know that's not the first time you've done it because I've seen you do it, you know, other times as well. So, you know, I appreciate you as a, as a, as a brother. I love what you're doing, man. This is dope. You guys are family, man. So it wasn't a stretch at all, man. I uh, appreciate and love you guys. Uh, yeah, man. Still trying to get a cooking video from you. Well, uh, uh, I'm on it. I see the stuff you drop on Instagram, man. It's good stuff. What's the best way for for people that want to reach out to you man email uh be at gmail.com um instagram is you i think it's chef you. chef b underscore read at, at uh chef b underscore read thanks man for uh for the sit down man always good talking with you no problem man i appreciate appreciate you having me all right i hope you enjoyed today's presentation also please like and subscribe to the channel hope to see you again on the next one have a great day. Take care.